Hello and welcome back to the Deep Six Wrestling Podcast. This is Rob and that means it's Friday. So it is time for the Smackdown Podcast. Before we jump into the show, uh, you can find us on social media on Facebook at Deep Six Wrestling. If you have Facebook still, a lot of people do not. On Twitter at Deep Six Wrestling without the G. Uh, and you can also find us on YouTube and subscribe to us there at Deep Six Wrestling Podcast. And uh, please support the podcast on any platform that you listen. Give us a like, review, follow, subscription, however you do it. It's very helpful to us. So thanks. Thanks for that. So uh, before we jump in, or as we're jumping in, I got to ask... So this week's episode of SmackDown kicked off with Ronda Rousey just kind of showing up out of nowhere and getting in the ring. And she says that she will not leave the ring until she's reinstated. And she calls out Adam Pearce. Adam comes out with a bunch of security and says that he can't do it and that things don't work like that. He asks her respectfully to leave the ring peacefully. And she says she did that last week. But this week, he says, do, she, Ronda says, do not make her choose violence. And of course, the security guards approach Ronda in the ring, and she just kills all of them. Uh, four good-sized dudes, too. So, made Ronda look like the killer that we all know she is. She locks one of them in at the arm bar and makes him tap out. And uh, a couple of police officers come down, and Ronda just kind of willingly gets handcuffed by them, and they take her away. And as Ronda is leaving in the back of a police car out of the arena, Roman Reigns' SUV pulls up and he steps out. And the crowd gives him a huge ovation. Uh, Interesting to note, he seems like he's all by himself. So, will that play into the show later on? We'll see. For our first match of the evening, we have Sonya Deville and Natalya in the ring already. With their music, with Natalia's music playing for the second, for the first round, the final first round match of the women's tag team title tournament against uh, NXT's Toxic Attraction. It was supposed to be Zoe Stark and Nikita Lyons, but Zoe Stark was injured in her championship match this week with Mandy Rose, and yeah, the replacement is now Toxic Attraction. Probably for the best. They're actually a tag team, so that's kind of refreshing. Bailey, Dakota Kai, and EO Sky are in the front row behind the announce desk. Uh, we all know that Michael Cole and Bailey have a great dynamic, so they were bickering the whole time, which is kind of funny. But yeah, you know what? I it definitely is nice to see an actual tag team and not two singles wrestlers. You know that were just thrown together for this tournament, so that's kind of good. Both teams traded some offense early with Toxic Attraction getting the upper hand by throwing Natalia into the ring steps to head to the commercial break. Uh, When we come back, the NXT call-ups are firmly in control still, uh, but Sonya is able to take advantage when JC Jane tries to kick her, tries to kick her, tries to put her in a sharpshooter. Can't even read my own notes. I can read my own notes, but it autocorrected to kick. Instead of put, I don't know how the hell that happened, but thank you. Thank you, iPhone, for that. Uh, she tries to put her in a sharpshooter, and she kind of takes her uh, attention. JC, by the way, you know, pronouns, pal. JC tries to put her in the sharpshooter, and JC takes her attention away from DeVille for a second to taunt Natalia. And it's just long enough for DeVille to take control again and uh, get the hot tag to Natalia. Who beats JC down for a bit, but she is eventually distracted by Gigi and loses control again. Gigi gets tagged in, and JC takes out Sonya and throws her into the barricade. Bailey and and her company are making fun of Sonya. Uh, Gigi makes a blind tag to JC, uh, unbeknownst to Natalia, who locks Gigi in the sharpshooter, only to be rolled up from behind by the legal woman, JC Jane. Toxic Attraction advances to round two to face Ra- Raquel Rodriguez and Aaliyah. The right team definitely won. This was a really good uh, showcase for Toxic Attraction. I'm hoping they stay up for good. They did. I, I heard 
I don't remember whether it was Pat or Michael Cole. Someone made a comment about how these tag titles are going to be defended across all brands. So are they just kind of ditching the NXT women's tag titles? I hope that's the case because they're unnecessary to have both. So I guess we'll see. If that's the case, that's great because, like, like I just said, we don't need two women's tag titles. So, yeah, that's that would be good because Toxic Attraction is a great addition to the roster for that. And they'd be a, I think they'd be a solid first choice to win. I don't think they're going to be the ones to win the tournament. They're probably going to get knocked out next round because Raquel Rodriguez is exists. So we'll see. But, yeah, this was this was a solid opener. It wasn't fantastic or anything, but it was solid and a good showcase for uh, a fresh young team. So, yeah. Sami Zayn is backstage walking past Roman Reigns' door. And the security guard says that Roman wants to talk to Sami. And the tribal chief asks how Zayn is. And Sami says it's been a little dicey as of late. And that he's been kind of fighting with Jay a lot. And Jay's been yelling at him. And he kind of just jabbers on and explains what's been going on the last few weeks. Uh, and Roman says Sammy's right. And that Jay can be like that sometimes. And that he'll be right back. And ha ha for Sammy to wait right there. Roman's phone rings. And it's Jay on the phone. Roman tells Sammy to answer it. He does. And Jay is yelling at him. You don't actually hear it really. But Jay is apparently yelling at him. And uh, he tells Sammy that the Usos will not be at SmackDown tonight. Uh, Roman seems a little worried, says that's not good, but that uh, Sammy's going to be there for Roman. They kind of talked a little bit about the Intercontinental title match that Sammy's in tonight, and that Roman said Sammy would be good with the title in the Bloodline. So I, I like the dynamic here. Roman asks if Sammy is still cool with Kevin Owens, and he tells Sammy to let KO know. That Roman doesn't owe anyone anything, and Sammy kind of downplays his uh, his friendship with Owens again. So it was kind of funny. Sammy is part of the blind bloodline, just gets better and better and better. And I can't wait to see what the eventual breaking point of this is, because uh, it's it's definitely coming. So we'll we'll see. We cut to the ring, and the maximum male models are in the ring with Max and Maxine. The crowd actually gave them a pretty good ovation. That's uh. That's good. Good for them. Um, Max starts talking. Uh, he doesn't really get to say anything pretty much before Hit Row's music hits. And they come to the ring to a much more subdued reaction than last week. So I guess maybe that was just kind of like the pop that people were excited to see them back. But it, it wasn't sustained this week, really. Uh, Max says that the Top Dollar and Ashante are not maximum male model material. Uh, and Hit Row attacks the models and sends them running. And then Hit Row starts performing in the ring, doing a rap and with a bunch of fog. It was really random. I, I Apparently they did this in NXT as well. I thought it was really out of place and out of nowhere. I didn't really enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I uh, it didn't do it for me. But, you know, whatever. Maybe people liked it, but... Uh, Hit Row definitely got a noticeably worse reaction this week. So I'm wondering if last week was just kind of like a welcome back pop and that's it. And they're not going to really be super over. But we'll see. We'll see going forward. There was a backstage vignette of Scarlet and Karrion Cross. Karrion was basically calling out Drew McIntyre. And uh, saying that Drew failed as the chosen one. They chose... Drew and were wrong and he basically kept drilling this point home that they chose Drew and they were wrong so he's just trying to get into Drew's head and yeah I'm actually they're actually doing a really good job with this feud I again I've stated I'm not really a big carrying cross guy but his presentation thus far has been absolutely stellar I, I can't lie it's been really good I'm actually excited to see what happens Next up, we have the fatal five-way match for an Intercontinental title match against Gunther at Clash at the Castle, featuring Rick O'Shea, Ireland's favorite son, Madcap Moss, Sheamus, Ireland's second famous son, favorite son, of course, Happy Corbin, and Montreal's favorite son, Sami Zayn, 
who comes out to an absolutely thunderous ovation as the hometown hero. And Sammy just kind of stands aside to start the match and lets everyone else fight, basking in the ole, ole, ole chants that are raining down on him. Well deserved. Uh, it's nice to see Sammy get a reaction like that. He hasn't in a while. He's uh, deserving of it. In the beginning, Corbin and Sheamus have a bit of a makeshift alliance, uh, and they kind of take everyone out. Ricochet does this run-up thing where he runs up Corbin's chest and does a backflip, but he gets punched right in the face as he lands. So, cool move, but it didn't really help him much. Michael Cole actually mentioned El Generico on commentary. I'm guessing that was a little one-time thing, but it's a cool little callback for Sami Zayn in his previous life. If you want to call it that, since El Generico is dead. So, R.I.P. Uh, Corbin, at one point, was single-handedly dominating literally everyone in the match for a while. Like, he, he was able to take down every single person, which was kind of cool. It's cool to see Corbin get to dominate like that. He doesn't normally get to get to do that. He's kind of more like a cowardly heel. So, good for him. Uh, finally, Rick takes him down with a drop kick and a tornado DDT. And then Madcap absolutely destroys Ricochet with a shoulder tackle. It looked crazy. He went flying. Sheamus hits the 10 beats of Bodron on Madcap Moss. Then Corbin. Then Ricochet. And he goes to do it on Sammy. And finally, Sammy reverses him. And... <clears throat> the, oh, my God. Autocorrect is killing me today. I'm sorry, guys. And he hits... Uh, he, he knocks Sheamus out of the ring and he hits both Sheamus and Corbin with a diving senton bomb over the top rope. Sammy then hits a pop-up Michinoku driver on Ricochet for a great near fall. Uh, the crowd was red hot throughout for Sammy Zayn. Like, w not even red hot, they were white hot. It was nuts. He then hits a blue thunder bomb on Madcap Moss for another great near fall. Sheamus hits a middle rope white noise on Sammy, but Sammy rolls out of the ring and he's selling his shoulder, you know, the previous, the uh, surgically repaired shoulder. So that's uh, some good continuity there. He's selling the shoulder and he's taken to the back and he's seemingly out of the match. The crowd is dismayed. Uh, Madcap hits Sheamus with a middle rope fall away slam. Uh, and also, no one no one reverses the end of A's better than Ricochet. He did it twice in this match in the same way where he kind of like flips over him. It's so fluid, so beautiful. Sheamus hits what, that pump knee strike on, uh, I believe it was Moss. And that thing looks better than the bro kick most of the time. It's almost exactly the same motion, but it's just the, the knee strike just looks more brutal every time. I don't know what. He should just use that as the finisher instead at this point. Ricochet almost wins with a shooting star press on Sheamus, but Corbin is able to break up the pin. Sammy returns to the to the ring, and the crowd is absolutely uh, ecstatic. Zayn hits an exploder suplex with one arm, and then the haluva kick on Ricochet and covers him as the crowd absolutely loses their mind. They're about to see their hometown hero win the match. And go on to Clash of the Castle. But at the last possible second, Happy Corbin pulls Sammy out of the ring. And Corbin tries to take advantage and pick Ricochet, pin Ricochet. But he's hit by a bro kick out of nowhere. And Sheamus pins him and wins the match. And he's going on to face Gunther at Clash of the Castle. This was an absolutely incredible match. This probably should have been the main event. No, this definitely should have been the main event. I understand why they're doing, you know, they always have Roman Reigns as the main event when he's on. He's the biggest star, but this match should have been the main event. This could have, this was easily pay-per-view quality. Um, honestly, this is like a low-key, uh, maybe even a low-key match of the year contender. I wouldn't say I'm gonna, I would put it as my match of the year, but it's definitely, I think it could be considered. I wouldn't, I, it could be argued for that, I think. Um, as, as someone who watched Dynamite this week, uh, it was the best match of the week for me. I enjoyed this more than I enjoyed Danielson and uh, Daniel Garcia. So I will state that for the record. Come at me. Um, and honestly, everybody looks like a million bucks. It was great. 
great showcase for everybody involved. It was, um, honestly, it, it felt like it could go either way. I do think Sheamus is the right choice, though. I think if I had to have picked one person to win, it would have been Sheamus. But I really wasn't sure going in who was going to win the match. Backstage, not even backstage, we just have like a, a vignette for the Viking Raiders where they talk about their feud with the New Day. And the New Day are warriors. They respect them. But it's time to end it. And it's time for a new Viking day. There's like a Viking ritual going on. Uh, Sarah Logan, I believe, was involved. There's a a woman that you can't really see. You can't really see her face. You can't really tell 100% who it is. But I was pretty sure it was Sarah Logan. And I saw that Sean Ross Sapp also stated it was her. And he's usually pretty good with his scoops. So uh, I'll take his word for it that it was Sarah Logan. Uh, they do this ritual where they burn some New Day merch, and that's about it. Um, I don't know how this match is going to go forward, because it seems like Woods is going to be out for a while with that storyline injury, but maybe not. So uh, if it's a tag match, hopefully they get some time and they do it justice, because they definitely have chemistry. It's just they haven't really gotten the right amount of time and the right kind of match together. So we'll see. Could be good. Um... Then we have Kayla Braxton interviewing Liv Morgan backstage, and she is not wearing the arm brace anymore, finally. Uh, she asks about her match tonight with Shotzi, and Liv acknowledged that there is a target on her back and on her arm because of her injury, but she is going to do anything to keep her title. Hmm. Is that a tease, I see? I mean, I feel like Liv has been teasing some darker tendencies lately. So is that another subtle tease at a uh, a turn for Liv? Maybe some foreshadowing, if you will. I wouldn't be opposed to it. We'll see what happens. Uh, Liv comes out, and then Shotzi comes out next. And actually, Shotzi kind of cuts a little bit of a promo and just kind of said that... Uh, this was a mistake for Liv to take the match and that Shotzi is going to make her pay and regret it. So, yeah, I mean, cool. Get, let, let, give Shotzi a little bit of time to speak. That's that's cool. Uh, Liv takes control early but is selling the injured arm. Uh, Shotzi is able to spike Morgan with an inverted DDT on the apron to go to commercial. Uh, they have some back and forth where they're kind of fighting on the mat together. They're just like punches throwing punches back and forth at each other and then Liv officially fights back into the match and hits a code breaker followed by oblivion for the win pretty quick match uh but it was decent like it wasn't like it was a sprint it wasn't like a a squash or anything it was just a little sprint of a match here it didn't it could have done done with a, a few more minutes definitely but it wasn't terrible it, it was solid uh, after the bell, Shayna attacks Liv and teases breaking her arm. She has her in that stomp position again, but Shayna says that she won't break her arm so that they can still have the match in Cardiff. She wants to break her arm and take her championship in Wales. And then she kicks Liv in the face and leaves her lying. Oof. Uh, this was a nice segment. Gets to show off Shayna as... A very dangerous competitor and uh, a real threat to take the title. I do think Liv is going to hang on, but it's going to be... Uh, it definitely could go either way. I'm not saying that Shayna doesn't have a chance. So it definitely is intriguing. Then we are on to the main event segment of the evening. Roman Reigns is out first for his face-to-face -face meeting with Drew McIntyre ahead of their title match at Clash of the Clash at the Castle. Clash of the Castle, it says here. But that's wrong. It's Clash at the Castle. And for the first time in forever, Roman Reigns is all alone. Roman says anyone who says that they are the face of this company, anyone who says that they are the main event, or anyone that says they are carrying the company on their back is lying. Roman is the only one who's able to do all that. Uh, and he says that he doesn't need a face-to-face -face meeting be with Drew because Drew is beneath him. And, of course, Drew McIntyre's music hits and he comes down to the ring. Drew says that Roman doesn't does not represent the titles the right way and the way that they deserve. And that Reigns doesn't deserve to be the champion. Obviously, Roman does not agree with this. 
Uh, but Drew says that Roman has had a ton of help keeping the title between Heyman doing his politics backstage and the Usos helping him out in the ring. I mean, it's kind of hard to argue with that. Honestly, I mean, Roman has been very dominant and has been able to win matches by himself, of course. But uh, it's definitely a good point. Uh, also, Drew says that uh, Roman is just a man by himself and that he should be afraid of Drew. And uh, Drew says that he wants to fight tonight since they're all alone. And the two start brawling with Drew getting the upper hand. Uh, and as Drew goes for the Claymore, Sami Zayn intercepts it yet again. Same thing as last week. He pushes Roman out of the way and eats the Claymore. Roman hits a Superman punch and goes for the spear. But Drew is able to hit the Claymore kick instead and stand tall with the titles to close SmackDown. Is this our future in two weeks in Wales? Are we going to have a new champion in Drew McIntyre? Hmm. Honestly, if anybody can do it, it's Drew McIntyre. Personally, I don't think Drew is the right choice, but I wouldn't be mad either because Drew is Drew's great. So we'll, we'll see. It's definitely going to be interesting. And we still have Karrion Cross waiting in the wings. So we'll see what happens. Definitely got some intrigue going on. Yeah. Uh, it was a solid episode of SmackDown. Um, we had an absolutely banger. Absolute banger in the five-way match with the right person going over. The right team going over in the tag title or the tag tor title tournament. So, yeah. Uh, there's some, definitely some good developments here. And uh, looking forward to, to to Raw to see what happens. I'll try and catch as much of that as I can. And, uh, yeah, I will catch you guys next week for the next episode. And uh, thank you all for listening. Peace.